Hi, I am Dr. Ashwin Mehta. I am the Director of Cardiology at Jaslok Hospital and I have been associated with Jaslok Hospital since the time it has been founded. Today I want to talk to you about a very important topic. You know, the heart attack is the commonest cause of death. In fact, it is the number one cause of death after the age of 50 and it surpasses cancer and strokes. Even in younger people, the incidence of heart attack is gradually increasing. Why does heart attack take place? The major reason is that when there is a blood supply to an important artery supplying blood to the heart muscle, it gets completely choked up, the patient experiences pain. No part of the body can ever survive without blood supply and therefore that portion of the heart muscle dies. This in medical parlor known as an acute myocardial infarction. I might refer to this term myocardial infarction time and again in my talk, but it means in common language as acute heart attack. Unfortunately, it occurs very unexpectedly, very sudden, at the time when the patient is expecting least to happen. And our difficulty is that this heart attack, if treated in time, then it can bring about very good results but unfortunately we don't get an opportunity to treat it in time. The reasons are many. First of all, when the patient gets chest pain, he denies. This could be gas, this could be some kind of acidity and how could I get the heart attack when I've been enjoying a good life, healthy life, I've been regularly exercising, why should I get the heart attack? In the middle of the night, anyone who gets an unexplained chest pain, you should have a high suspicion of a heart attack. Unfortunately, when such a thing happens, he hides. For quite some time, he may not even inform anybody. And when it becomes unbearable, he wakes up his wife. His wife also is in a denial mode. Instead of thinking that, let me shift my husband immediately to a hospital, she brings some gas medicines, she gives some acidity medicines, etc. And the valuable time is further wasted. Unfortunately, whenever this occurs, it occurs in the breadwinner or the father or the husband in the family. Now, most of the decisions in the family are taken by husband, the family, the head of the family. And therefore, the wife is completely confused because she is not used to take any decisions. In that state of mind, she immediately looks for the help. She tries to call brother-in-law, she tries to call father-in-law, she calls neighbor and the valuable time is wasted again. By the time they reach the hospital, ordinarily two to three hours are wasted. This solution to this problem is to educate them. Well, then comes another logistical problem, the traffic. In Mumbai, the traffic is becoming day by day worse. From one place to another place, like place where he can be offered the right kind of treatment, it may take as much as an hour or two. And then by the time they reach the hospital, the hospital is not still prepared to accept this kind of a patient and may not be very serious about the expediency of treatment. So these are the reasons when the patient reaches treatment modality, he receives treatment modality quite, quite late. How do we solve some problems? One, first of all, apart from education, we'll have to have that these traffic pathways in case the ambulance is moving, should be given utmost priority. The hospital should be alerted before the patient is transferred to the hospital so that the infrastructure in the hospital is, is set up. In our hospital at Just Low, we have a supra fast pathways. We have a code. Moment one gets a phone call at the hospital, we immediately alert everybody in the team. And this is called code PAMI. When the code PAMI is announced, there is an alertness in the casualty department. The doctor is invariably present and is alert and is ready to take an ECG of the patient. The lift is kept ready and the cath lab where we are going to offer the treatment is also kept ready and turned on. The doctors move in and the experts also move in and the patient is offered a treatment which I'm going to describe shortly. The most important treatment, and which is the most successful form of therapy for an acute heart attack is called angioplasty. 
As I already told you, the heart attack occurs because there is a complete blockage of the artery supplying the portion of the heart muscle and this should be opened up as expeditiously as possible to restore the blood supply to the dying heart muscle. This can be achieved best by taking the patient onto an angiography table where we take a catheter and re remove the clot and remove the clot and put a stent there and thereby re-establish re the blood flow to a starving heart muscle. This is called angioplasty. So astonishing, so remarkable, so effective the results of this treatment is that in 33% of the cases at the end of three months, evidences of heart attacks are not even visible. The heart is completely intact. This can only happen provided the patient is offered treatment within the first two hours. In fact, the first one hour is called as a golden hour. And uh, in fact, uh, I think that if we have to improve the mortality rates of heart attack, I think this all will be completely covered up. A, the patient detecting symptoms most promptly understanding the seriousness of the symptoms, be immediately rushing to a nearby hospital or calling the hospital. Sometimes a well-equipped hospital ambulance can go home and start the initiation of treatment and then bring the patient in a safe condition to the hospital for further treatment. See, we should have logistics set in so that the patient can be transported to the hospital with the minimum delay. And thirdly, the hospitals also should develop supra-fast pathways within the hospital where the entire team is alerted, each one performing his own job so as to transfer the patient onto the angiography table to offer the treatment which would eventually revascularize, reopen, re-establish the blood flow in a blocked artery.